Hey, hi everyone, Phil from statisticsmentor.com. The interpretation of the coefficients of a multiple linear regression model is very similar to the simple linear regression model. The case I'm going to give you here is where the dependent variable is continuous and the x's are also continuous and also they're not transformed, so they're in the original units. Uh, I said a lot there, but you'll see why all that's important in a moment. So I regress earnings on years spent in the company, tenure, and years of schooling. The units of earnings, say, is measured hundreds of dollars per year. Tenure is measured in years. Schooling measured in years. All right, so this is the output. How do we interpret the coefficients of tenure, which is 0.28? We would say... First, let's forget about units. We would say that one unit increase in tenure leads to an increase in earnings by 0.28 units holding years of schooling fixed. I'll say it again. It's read as one unit increase in tenure leads to an increase in earnings by 0.28 units holding schooling fixed. So that interpretation is exactly identical to the simple linear regression model except for I've set at the end, holding schooling fixed. Okay? And that's the difference. So the idea is that you know you you're holding all the things that can be predict um help to predict earnings, you're holding them fixed except for one thing, you're just trying to isolate the effect of that one thing on earnings. Okay, that's the reason for saying that holding blah 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 fixed. Now putting in the units we say this. This is the correct way to say it. For an additional year spent in a company, predicted earnings will increase by about $28 a year. Okay, so $28 as opposed to $0.28 because I'm saying earnings say is measured in hundreds of dollars a year. Say it one more time. For an additional year spent in the company, Predicted earnings will be $28 holding years of schooling fixed. Now, if you think you've got that, do the same for schooling, 2.3. I would say that for an additional year spent in schooling, the predicted earnings will increase by, two, by about $230 a year, not $2.3 a year, because I'm saying earnings is measured in hundreds of dollars a year. So I say it again because I think I missed something out there. For an additional year of schooling, the predicted earnings will increase by 200, about $230 per year, holding tenure fixed. In general, if we have more than one X's, uh, loads more other X's, we would just say holding all the other X, all everything else fixed. If you've done Latin, you'd say caterus paribus. Not that I've ever done Latin, but you see that in some textbooks. Just a fancy word which you can just ignore. Just say holding all the other, everything else fixed. Going back right to the start of the video, I said that this only holds when we're supposing that these x's are continuous. Yes, so the interpretation here is only for when the x's are continuous, not qualitative variables. In other words, not dummy variables, which are interpreted differently. Now, just because I've got positive coefficients here, I better point out that you don't always just say one unit increase in next leads to an increase in earnings. I'm saying increase here because both the coefficients here are negative. Supposing the coefficient on tenure is negative here, I would say, if this was negative 0.28, I would say for an additional year of tenure, the earnings is predicted to fall or decrease by $28 a year. Okay, so that uh, I hope that has been helpful. You can now interpret the coefficients in a multiple linear regression model where the x's are uh, continuous and they are in their original units, i.e. there are no log transformations. That's, for that, you need to watch my other video. Okay, all for now.